1981, an Israeli jet fly towards Iraq's first nuclear reactor. Although approved by the International Atomic Energy Agency, the Israeli government saw it as a threat and launched a surprise attack. This convinced the Iraqis of the need for a deterrent, and the man Saddam Hussein turned to was Dr. Jafar. He was, in many ways, appropriately described as the father of the Iraq nuclear program. It was Jafar that came up with the means of enriching uranium that eventually they used as their primary means uh, to get the program started. So he's very credible. He was well regarded by Saddam and Saddam's sons. I, I view him as a major figure. Dr. Jaffa's decision to accept this offer was to mark his entire life and change the course of history. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. Force can never be the first answer, but sometimes it's the only answer. Events in Iraq have now reached the final days of decision. We have sent hundreds of weapons inspectors to oversee the disarmament of Iraq. Our good faith has not been returned. On the eve of the invasion in 2003, Dr. Jaffa and his family fled Iraq. Ten years after the toppling of Saddam Hussein, he's one of the few of his top advisors not to have been killed or jailed. Safe in Dubai, is now prepared to reveal his side of the story. Saddam initiated the nuclear program. And he gave me a, a blank piece of paper and said, write down what you need here. I, I never wrote what I needed, but... Could you have refused? Well, I, I don't think. I, I could not have refused, no. You mean by, President asked me to do that and I say, no, sorry, I'm not doing it? No, no, that's not, that's not possible. Not with Saddam. For some, he's a true patriot. Others still view him with deep suspicion. But what is Dr. Jaffa's real place in history? <laughs>